let, let's open our applications and go to the COVID-19 contact registration and uh, follow up. Uh, you touch that. And uh, the moment you get there, it will bring you a list of all uh, of all the clients that have been pre-registered of, of, of all the um, of all the people who have been uh, entered within the system uh, that you can add on to that. Now, at the bottom of the screen, uh, we have two icons. One represents a list, and then the other one is uh, we are calling that a carousel that thing that looks like a flag. So you can touch that and it will open for you your data uh, within, um, it will open for you your data in a map format. Uh, I need to point out that this will still load if you have internet or you don't have internet, as long as your records have been uh, pre-entered and uh, your location was on before. And it is also important to note that um, uh, because of the offline module, these processes are normally faster if there is no internet connection, especially if you're in places where internet is a bit of a problem. So you can recommend for people to switch off internet whenever they want to use uh, some of these features. So this is a, a representation of all the records that we have entered uh, within the system, uh, based on the list that we had there. And you can navigate through uh, you can navigate through this particular list. Uh, it will show you the different records. The moment I scroll through, it will bring me that person uh, along the map. So uh, move it sideways uh, to be able to see uh, those people uh, within that point. Again, um, this information, it is something that is collected. You have to define uh, when you're setting up uh, your, when you're setting up the program, you have to define the point when uh, this data should be collected. Uh, sorry, the coordinates should be collected. So as you can see, as I keep uh, scroll, scrolling through, I'm able to see the location of each of the TEIs uh, within uh, the system. Um, I'll take a moment to find out whether we are all on the same page or Uh, you can uh, just give a thumbs up or a wave uh, to show that we are following the same way together. Uh, otherwise, I, I could go back. All right, so uh, we have about six people who are saying that we are together. So th that is uh, the carousel for us, uh, and it shows us uh, the different people uh, on our map. And since it's a big map, you might have to uh, minimize or uh, in order to navigate through. Uh, additionally, at the bottom for each of the TEIs, uh, there are some uh, attributes that you define to be viewable or to, to, be, uh, to be viewed or as part of a list uh, for searching. Uh, these records can also be seen there. As you can see, we have the date of birth, the first name, the surname, uh, the system generated ID, and uh, the facility that they were enrolled in. So for each record, as you scroll through those details, I will be part of as long as uh, the data was uh, collected uh, on the map. Okay, um, now how do we navigate? So for example, we are looking at, uh, at Cynthia Jones uh, and they are located in that place. So if I want to navigate to Cynthia's dashboard, uh, from this point, I could either go back and search for Cynthia or I could just touch uh, that stick person uh, to be able to bring me to, to be able to take me to her, her particular, sorry. To be able to take me to, sorry, don't touch the stick person. You touch the, the details at the bottom. You touch the details at the bottom and it will bring you to where uh, Cynthia, uh, to Cynthia's uh, TEI dashboard and you enter the rest of the details that are supposed to appear within that. And if I click uh, on the arrow, it will take me back to the map. So uh, that's how you can navigate uh, from the map uh, to the person's TEI dashboard, etc, etc. Again, uh, we could still use the search feature. As you've noticed, there's still a search icon here. So you can still search uh, for Cynthia uh, from, uh, from within the map, map icon, or we could still uh, use uh, the rest of uh, uh, the feature that uh, 
that, that Daisy had shown us previously. So here we are not, right now the view is showing us a non-specific person, just all the people that have been uh, uh, added into the contact tracing program. And now uh, let's say we want to see uh, the different um, uh, the different map layers uh, within uh, the system. So on the on the top right corner, uh, there is the icon uh, for DHIS two that represents uh, the, the the layers of DHIS two. Just touch that, and it should bring you something like that. There is. Uh, those are squares or triangles. On the top right corner, uh, just touch that, it should bring you this particular screen. So as you can see, those tick people represent the TEI coordinates that were entered that during data entry. And you can change the layers as you wish. So if you say you want to do uh, enrollment coordinates, uh, you select the enrollment coordinates and you click apply. Now, during data collection or during uh, the definition of this, uh, we didn't define uh, the enrollment coordinates, so this is why it is empty. So we can say we want to know the TEI and then uh, the people that they've been in contact with. So the people they've been in contact with will be represented with the purple, while uh, the index case is going to be represented uh, with that red uh, icon. So you click on uh, apply and it will show you um, a line of people uh, and how they relate to one another or how they've been uh, uh, moving around or how the disease has been uh, particularly uh, spreading. So this is how it should be able to do uh, the contact tracing for you. We went through uh, relationships or contact tracing with Daisy yesterday. And the moment we establish those relationships, then uh, the lines will be showing up. So. We have a few people whose relationships have been added, hence uh, this particular, that's why you see very few uh, lines showing up uh, within there. Uh, again, a thumbs up if we are together. If you have managed to accomplish that, just uh, give me a thumbs up. All right, um, okay. Again, under the maps layers, uh, we have um, under uh, the maps layers we have a satellite view. So this satellite view will change the view of the map. You can select that, and it changes it to whatever the Earth looks like right now. And we can say we want to look at the heat map layer, um, and you come and click on the apply. So the people who are a bit uh, more analytical, you want to know how the disease is spreading or what areas are mostly affected. Of course, this is a dummy data, so it may not give you a, a very good impression. But if you want to know, say, what areas are affected by uh, malaria or areas affected by cholera and how it is uh, cutting across, across or the population that's within, uh, then you can apply uh, the you can apply the heat map layer to be able to see that and see how uh, the bodies uh, move along. So uh, this is uh, those are some of the layers uh, that have been uh, implemented uh, within the Android uh, capture. And it is important to note that for this, we are looking at per TEI and not necessarily um, uh, per person. So. Um, Another thumbs up if we have managed to uh, to get the heat map player on our phones. If you have succeeded, perfect. Uh, okay. Maybe Emma. Yes, please. Yeah, the the heat maps that we are seeing are not like yours. Mm. Maybe it, the, is the instant difference. Um, so I did change the view from street view to satellite view. Uh, that, that was the only difference. Uh, is this what you're seeing? No, I can only see like a heat map under each in each uh, TI, not like uh, mm. the ones in the red and then the background is not white for me. I don't know for, uh, how it looks like for the other participants. 
uh, okay. I, I think we are probably using uh, different uh, instances. Uh, it could be different instances and we have uh, different data uh, from the system. Uh, Khadija and uh, Tuzo, most of us they are seeing uh, something totally different. Uh, but I hope uh, we do understand the concept. Uh, no, I mean, I'm using a different instance from what you're using. I am not choosing uh, the same instance as you. But the idea here is uh, the concept, how do we apply this and uh, how do we utilize this? Okay. Um, uh, perfect, uh, Kehinde. Yes, it, it might be different, but the, that's the general idea. Uh, we want to be able to practice this uh, when we leave uh, this academy. Okay, uh, just to emphasize, um, when you're creating your program, uh, you need to have defined uh, what you want to see. So if you have uh, data elements that are geo coordinates, uh, these will also be added under the layers. If you have, um, if you have uh, enrollment coordinates, they will also be added. If you have event coordinates, they will also uh, be added uh, as part of the list. So this particular list here is going to depend on how you have defined uh, your program uh, previously and also, sorry, it will also depend on the ability of people uh, collecting these uh, geo coordinates. Uh, again, for emphasis, um, collecting geo coordinates does not depend on internet. Uh, as long as your location is enabled or has been uh, previously enabled, you should be able to collect coordinates uh, for your TEIs. Uh, before you actually, before you can uh, pick, uh, be able to pick those coordinates. So we don't need internet to be able to present this. So we are going to go ahead and uh, search for someone called um, Baker. I want us to go church, sorry, sorry about that. Uh, let's search for, let's go back to the map. And by the way, that is uh, my location. My phone's location is also here. We are looking at where Emma is currently seated. All right, um, we, we need to look for, we are going to search for someone called uh, Charles Baker. So let's go to the search menu. Uh, you click that search icon and you search for first name is Charles. And then uh, this is going to be a bit specific so that we get the right person. And the last name is uh, Baker, so B A. Uh, where is that? B A R K E R, uh, and you search for let me just search for Baka. That's the last name. So this is uh, that is sorry, Carlos Baka. So that is the person we are supposed to search for uh on the map so this is where carlos baka is located and you can be able to identify carlos baka now if carlos baka had any uh contacts associated to him or index cases associated to him you would also be able to represent that on the map but uh, we had not uh pre-entered uh, the contacts for carlos uh, prior so within uh, the map section, uh, there is another icon uh, just below the layers map. Uh, this one will give you a location of where you currently are. So it's not giving us a location of Carlos, but a location uh, of Emma. Apparently, I'm moving around. It will give us a location of Emma uh, and where she's currently seated. 
Yeah, so that's where I am. Uh, I'm currently seated and I could further uh, go out of uh, uh, Android of out of VHIS2 and I access this using uh, the Google Maps uh, that is on my phone. Again, uh, to further locate where I am. So uh, that's uh, one of the ways that you should be able to uh, determine location or the fancy things that we are bringing on board uh, for, for DHIS2. So uh, raise a hand if you have managed to do this from wherever you are. Uh, Emma, we want to see your cursor when you point. I'm using my phone. I'm not able to show you my cursor, but, but I try to give directions when I talk. So maybe just to repeat. Um, okay uh let's see if this will work so we do have here two icons in the corner right here and the first one is uh, the, the first one is what we are calling uh the layers so you can touch that the map layers and it will always uh, allow you to it will always allow you to show the okay when you touch this it doesn't open So, uh, 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 unfortunately, when I try to point, then the rest of the other thing fails to work. But I will point, then I get out of that. So we do have in the right corner, the map layer, and then we have uh, the downer one. Uh, the downer one, this is uh, to get your location. The downer one will get your location, and then uh, this particular one will take you to another default app that is within uh, your phone. I, I hope that is clear. Uh, Harold, I hope you got that. So we have uh, our first option, which is blue in color. It gives us the map layers and how to manipulate, how to get to, uh, to the heat map or to show the TI coordinates on how to do the contacts that someone has been with. Now we have uh, the red icon, uh, the, the other blue one. This will give you the location of where you currently are as an individual, not the location of the suspect case or of the contact case. Then at the bottom, uh, the other circle that the other thing that I circled red, this takes you to the Google Maps. All right, so I have to stop that in order to proceed. Okay, um, so that, that is how we should be able to navigate out of the app and then uh, come back to, to the app. All right, um, I'm going to request the team to show a, hands, uh, a thumbs up if they've uh, got that particular session uh, before we move on. Okay, we have one thumb up, two, three, perfect, perfect. Okay, so now uh, moving on, uh, the next thing on our agenda item is uh, how to do uh, the analysis. So I'm going to exit this. Uh, you can exit, um, you can exit by uh, clicking uh, the arrow here. Uh, this is how you get out. So you can always do the back or you can always uh, use the back button or the back feature on your phone uh, to be able to go back to uh, where we started from. So that is uh, always uh, our starting screen. Now, when it comes to uh, the TEI analytics, we are looking at the analytics of a single uh, individual. So for people who are, for example, implementing, uh, if you're implementing uh, nutrition, or if you're implementing immunization, or you're implementing uh, TB and uh, HIV, I think there are, some, um, there are some values that you want to monitor uh, throughout the process. Uh, for example, people, whether people are growing, whether they are gaining, 
in in some way that's like taking medicine and things like that so you want to be able to monitor those things and th that is what the tei analytics is all about you we want to monitor the growth of someone based on uh, either service provided or no more growth, uh, like for example, within children. So let's go again uh, to contact tracing. Uh, let's open the contact tracing, contact registration and follow up. So touch that. And then uh, you go to the search icon. Uh, you go to the search menu. This is our search menu right here. You touch uh, the search menu and it brings you that screen we are still going to search for someone called uh, carlos baka we are searching for the same person so go ahead and uh, look for carlos and the surname is uh, baka that is uh, b a b a r that then uh, you come and search and this is the person we're interested in. So you touch that person to open uh, the TEI. Um, to open the TEI, let me open uh, my annotation again. Change colors. So I'm going to be uh, using yellow now. So, all right, okay. Okay, my menu is a bit hidden. I won't be able to do that. I just this time out. Uh, so at the bottom of the screen, uh, I hope we can see that we have one, two, three, four. We have uh, four things. Maybe I can. We, we have uh, four menus at the bottom of the screen. So the first one is to show you the TEI dashboard. Uh, the second one, uh, the, the second one shows us the, the, the second one shows us the, the indicators uh, as they are there. And then the third one will show you relationship. We saw that yesterday. And then uh, this is just notes per case. So we are interested in the second uh, menu of that. Uh, let me know if you can see that. We are interested in the second menu because uh, we are going to be looking at the TI analytics. Uh, thank you very much. So like I said, uh, for this particular, um, for this particular feature, it is beneficial for people who are monitoring our clients over time and you want to see growth or improvement uh, within your clients. So if uh, weight gain means, uh, let's, let's not focus on the obesity. If weight gain means someone is growing up or it means the drugs are working, then uh, you can use uh, weight to be able to monitor. Uh, that particular client, and here, right here, we are showing uh, the different the different indicators that have been set up. Again, uh, this feature here uses call numbers, so we cannot use option six. So, in other words, uh, if we are monitoring children and we are using uh, Jean Paul, can you hear me now? Uh, hello. Uh, am I audible? Yes, we can. I can hear. All right, thank you. Uh, so I was saying that we want to monitor the situation. So in places where um, in nutrition, sometimes instead of using white, they normally use the muak, that is the red, yellow, green, th those colors. So that won't work here. It will. Uh, this feature is supporting uh, whole numbers. So we have a graph here that shows uh, that this particular client uh, in July, there were 72. And then uh, in July, 2021, there were 72. And then in August, there were 2021. So depending on how you're monitoring this, uh, either the, it is a good thing or it is a bad thing. And um, now th that is uh, one thing. Then if you touch, uh, if you, if you if 
if you do uh, these uh, dots here, the three dots there, if you touch those, uh, it will bring you uh, this menu uh, that changes the view of your data. So you can see your data as a bar, as a table, or as a, a single value. So I can do that and it will change it to that format. Or I can come and select a view as table and it will bring me that. Or I could select uh, as a value and it will uh, bring that. Now here, you note it is bringing only one value, the latest value or the last value. It is not bringing uh, both values at the same time. Uh, then additionally on that menu, you can also filter if you want to see what has been happening over time, especially if you're using a line and you want to know what has been happening over time, you've been entering these records over time, then you can uh, filter uh, depending on how you're collecting this data, either on a monthly basis, a yearly basis, or any other, you can define that. Or you can also filter using org units. Let's say this person has moved from one facility to another. You should also be able to uh, filter uh, using uh, that particular, any of those features uh, for, for your client. Sorry, Emma. All right. uh, please go ahead. Uh, we cannot see the filters. I can only see the view as part, the view as table and the view as uh, values. Not the filter by period or by that. So again, uh, a different instance. Uh, no, I think, and... I think if you're on the demo, you should be able to see that on the commonly shared demo, those are visible. Uh, I'm using another demo, another first. No, I'm, I'm talking to the, like to the participants because I'm connected to the instance for the participants, so it's visible. So you may want to check again, please. Which demo, which demo are you referring, Yongo? I'll post it in the, in the chat just now. Okay, 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 thank you. Emma, you may continue, sorry. Uh, hello? Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, sorry about that, uh, internet interruptions. Okay, just a minute. Okay, uh, there's a question, uh, is there any way you can change what you may want to monitor? Uh, the answer is yes. Um, uh, here we are trying to explain um, what you can do uh, with these particular features. Uh, like I was explaining, you might want to monitor uh, weight. This actually also depends on your implementation. So if it's a nutrition, they are monitoring weight. If you're in learners, you might be monitoring someone's performance over time. If you're uh, monitoring uh, growth child immunization, you might want to monitor height and uh, things like that. So uh, that what you see in the indicators will depend on uh, what you want to monitor. Uh, another thing uh, to point out uh, is uh, we also monitor whole, this 
this looks at whole numbers. It is not going to look at the option set. So for places where you're saying uh, yes, no, or uh, you have any other option, the type of test is uh, RDT, PCR, we cannot monitor that. We will be only monitoring uh, numeric values uh, over time. Um, all right. Uh, I hope I answered uh, that one. So the next is um, I, I hope now people are able to see the different filters, uh, the period and the org unit. I, I hope we've managed to access that. And I, I hope we've been able to uh, uh, determine that. So the next thing we are going to look at are the predefined indicators uh, within uh, within the system. So uh, let's go back. Um, let's go back to our search menu. And uh, we are going to, so this next activity depends on, um, uh, depends on the indicators that we say we want to see uh, on the data, within the data entry, uh, within the program, you can define what indicators that you want to see uh, in the data entry screen. Uh, say you want to see age, or you want to see the number of tests that someone has, uh, has, ha has taken and things like that. So uh, for this particular one, we are going to look for someone called uh, Matthew. Uh, let's go back to, let's change the program. We are going to go to the COVID-19 case-based surveillance. COVID-19 uh, case-based surveillance. And you're going to look for, you go to the search menu and you look for Matthew. You look for Matthew, sorry, the first name is Matthew. And the surname is uh, Maker. So M-A-K-E-R and you search for that particular person. Uh, just a minute. Thank you. Okay, uh, this is going to be exercise. So let's go look for Matthew Maker while I try to sort out the instance I'm using. What's the spelling for Mega? Uh, hi, everyone. So I'm on a different instance and I can't find much. Uh, but uh, we are going to you. It's a let let this be practical. So let's go to the COVID nineteen uh, COVID nineteen case based surveillance. Look for Matthew. Uh, look for Matthew from uh, the COVID nineteen case based surveillance, and um, 
uh, once you find him, I think someone already said they found him. So we are going to determine how many tests Matthew has done. So I want you to go uh, to his TEI dashboard. I'm just clicking any person here right now. Uh, let's go to the TEI dashboard. And uh, right where well, we have uh, the stage three lab results, it should indicate the number of uh, tests that Matthew has had so far. Uh, are we there? Yeah, two tests. So if you click on that, uh, now if you move into the indicator section, it will show you what uh, Matthew has had so far. There are two tests. And it will also tell you one was PCR, one was positive, the other one was negative. Uh, just confirm in the chats or with the thumbs up. It is Matthew Maker, M A K E R. And Matthew is a double T. Okay, uh, if you move into, if you move to the indicator menu, it will show you are the different tests and uh, Matthew's test. So a thumbs up if you're there. All right, uh, okay. Okay, uh, so we have people there. So I hope we've been able to see uh, the two tests that Matthew has had uh, conducted and it will show you whether they were positive or whether uh, they were negative. So this is how we can monitor, we are monitoring the tests, we, we can monitor the different uh, situations uh, for that particular TEI. Uh, it is important to note that uh, for this particular analysis, it is on a case basis. So do not expect the kind of analysis uh, why are we looking at two tables? We have daily number of tests, total number of tests. I think, uh, I'm not sure why we're looking at two tests. Uh, uh, facilitators, why are we looking at two tests, two tables? Uh, oh, I, I I hope I don't say your name. Agassim, uh, we will get you a response uh, very soon on why we are looking at uh, two tables. Uh, it is also important to know that you can replicate what we saw the other side uh, for, for this. Uh, uh, I, I'm going to get for you an answer on why you're having, you'll have two tables uh, that you're looking at. Okay, uh, if we don't have uh, any other questions, Uh, if we don't have any other questions, uh, I would like to say that uh, that is um, uh, this is the end of this particular session on um, on uh, analytics within uh, within the Android Capture app. Thank you. Uh, over to you, uh, Khadija. Thank you, Emma. We can take a five minute break and be back at three five sharp. Khadija. Yes, Alice. Yes. Hi, it's Alice. Sorry. Um, I wanted to talk briefly before the break to the participants about the new um, DHS2 academic badges that we have put together at the University of Oslo. Is it possible? Hello? It's okay, Alice. It's okay? Okay, great. Would you 